Let's close our eyes. You are going to pray for yourself like this. Lay your hand upon your on your on your chest. And you go up, go to pray for yourself like this. Every giant in me that are already caged. Every giant in me that are already caged. Be loose now by fire in the name of Jesus. Pray like that for yourself. Aha, uh -huh. be loose now in the name of Jesus. Be loose now in the name of Jesus. Be loose now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Everlasting Father, we thank you. Our Redeemer, we appreciate you. We thank you because you are faithful. We appreciate you for a day like this in our life. Father, we say take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Over all the children that are here, oh God, we thank you. Over all the parents also, we thank you. Father, for the man of God here also, we thank our daddy in the Lord. For the way you have been using him also, we thank you. Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, is there not a cause? There must be a reason why we are here. Father, we depend upon you absolutely. For without you, we are nothing. Father, we pray. Tonight, O God, dominate this meeting now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, dominate this meeting now in the name of Jesus. Father, you know I know nothing. I depend upon you, God. Father, speak to your children, yourself in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the answer prayer. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Let's sit down like giants. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, today, by the grace of God, we have a cumbersome program before us. And we are going to share together within a few minutes uh, before us. So please, I want you to please bring out your Bible. Bring out your Bible, your daughter, your writing material. And I want you to listen very, very carefully. Because what you are going to hear today, you may not hear it again until you grow to adulthood. And I know it's going to benefit a lot of us as we are growing up in the Lord, in our family, in our career life, in the mighty name of Jesus. So please, let's open our Bible to the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Are we there? Jeremiah chapter 1. Open your Bible. I want to read from verse 4 to verse 10. I read. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I know thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Then said, Ah, I, Lord God, before I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee. From the, I mean, says the Lord. Then the Lord said, Put forth his hand and touch my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my word in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nation, over the kingdom, to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. The same book of Isaiah 29. Jeremiah 29, rather. Jeremiah 29. I will read just one, uh, one verse there. Verse 11. Verse 11. For I know thee, I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil. To give you expected end. Is it like that in your Bible? To give you an expected end. Uh, because of our time, you can write that also down. Isaiah 49, verse 1 and 5. Exodus 33, 
verse 12 and 17. That's Isaiah 49, verse 1 and 5. But before we go on to balance the scripture, I want us to read from the New Testament also. The book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. That's the New Testament. John chapter 1. I want to read verse 19 to probably uh, 27. John chapter 9, chapter 1. I read from verse 19. Are we there? And this is the record of John when the Duke sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not Christ. And they asked him, What, what then? Art thou a liar? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. Then he, and he said, They unto him, Who art thou, that we may give answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Praise the Lord. Let's look up here. You see, this morning we're going to discuss the issue of awakening the sleeping giant in you. Please try and jot something down. Eventually you may be giving the copy of this lecture, but that notwithstanding, I want to listen very carefully. Awakening the uh, sleeping giant in you. What is the meaning of awakening? It means to uh, stop sleeping and wake up. You see, it's to wake up, stop sleeping. Stop living a dossier life. What is Gaiant? Gaiant means a legendary woman being of great stature and strength. A living being of a great size. That's what we call a Gaiant. A Gaiant is a person of extraordinary power. You see, you know the two important words out of that topic now. We are going to deal with this message now. The thought of God is of good towards you. The thought of peace, the thought of love, the thought of kindness, the thought of success, and not failure. You see, everybody created by God, God has a thought towards you. God never think of bad things to happen to you. He has a kind of thought towards you, according to where we read this scripture. The thought of love, kindness, success, and not of failure. Therefore, if you ever notice failure in your life, something is wrong there. Because it's not the thought of God concerning your life to give you an expected end. It is your responsibility, therefore, to discover your purpose, your assignment in life. I hope you are hearing very well. You see, since you are created, since you are born, as you are growing up, you must be able to identify with the purpose of why you are here on earth. You see, life is not to be lived by trial and error, not by gambling. You should not be gambling with your life. As you are grown up children, you shouldn't be gambling with your life. There is a purpose for your life. You are not a biological mistake. You see, you are not a biological mistake at all. There is a purpose for your life. God has a purpose. For creating you. You are not a mistake at all. You are not a biological mistake. You are known before you are born. Say to yourself, I am known before I was born. I am known before I was born. You see, before you are born, God knew somebody like you. He knows you. You are not in the world by chance, but by choice of an infinite God. You see, God has determined that you are going to be in the world. You are not just come here by chance. Don't just say, oh, I just came into my parents by chance. No. You are born to be a voice to be reckoned with. You are born to be a voice in the society. You are born to be a voice in the family where you find yourself. You are born to be a voice in the church of God where you find yourself. You are not just to be a dogma. 
where you, you see yourself. You are born to be a voice, to be reckoned with. You are original and not a carbon copy at all. You are original. Tell yourself, I am original. I am not a carbon copy. You see, God is a creator and not a duplicator. You see, he's a creator. He created all men differently and with varied purpose. You see, we are not the same thing. When we were young in those days, we used to try, I want to be like so and so. I want to be like so and so. But the truth thing is, you are not created like anybody. You are so unique, you are special. God does not create anyone without an identity. God never created anyone without an identity. That is something very unique that makes you different from other. God created you, created you so unique, something different. Therefore, you cannot resemble any other person. Don't ever try to mimic anybody. Don't ever try to imitate anybody. Because you are so special. You see, you are absolutely perfect. You are perfect and genetically accurate to solve a specific problem on earth. Look up here. You are created to solve a problem. If you don't mind, get up upon your feet now. Rest upon your feet as I'm talking to you and talk to yourself. I am a working solution. Some people are sitting, sitting down now. Get up and walk. And you say, I am a working solution. You see, God has created you to solve a particular problem on earth. Nobody was created in vain. You are created to come and solve a particular problem. That is where you are on earth. As you are going about in the course of your movement in life, you are a working solution to certain challenges, to certain problems. You can sit down. To certain problems. Beloved, today, I want to tell you something. There's a reason. There is a reason why you are here. And until you discover and awaken the giant inside of you, you will be, you will be living a mediocre and unfulfilled life until you are able to see and recognize the reason why you are created. You see, the Bible told us clearly that you are a solution and you are not a problem. In Jeremiah chapter 1 where we read, verse 4 to 10, Jeremiah was created for a particular purpose. Abraham was created for a particular purpose. Moses, when I look at the life of Moses, Moses create, was created for a particular Moses and for, for a purpose. Let me give an example. Moses was created and he was born during a crisis whereby they have to keep Moses on top of the water. Are you getting me? You know the story? And Moses was there for quite some time until the daughter of Pharaoh now saw Moses and brought Moses to the palace. He lived in the palace for 40 years. After 40 years, he had a problem and God allowed him to go to wilderness for another 40 years. All those years he spending both in the palace and in the wilderness was a particular purpose. That is why when God was cutting to Moses that he's going to lead Israelites, Moses said, I don't want to go. God said, you are going to go. He got to a time when he said, God, send who you are going to send. I don't want to go. Are you getting me? God said, you are going to go. Because he has been trained for that purpose. Nobody can enter Pharaoh's palace. Nobody can enter the place. But he has lived inside that palace for 40 years. Nobody can weather the problem inside the wilderness. But Moses was there for 40 years in the wilderness. All the walking and what he went through in the wilderness was for a purpose. Tell yourself, whatever I'm going through now. Are you not following me? Whatever I'm going through now, God has determined it. And it is for a purpose. And for a purpose. Without discovering your purpose, beloved, you will be living a life of mimicking others and die chasing shadow. You see, if you don't discover yourself, you'll be living a life of mimicking others. As I'm talking to you now, you cannot be mimicking me. Sometimes I ask my son, I have only one son, and when he preaches, he used to preach because he's a preacher too, 
when he preaches, he doesn't preach like me. He preaches in a vibrant way. And I know it cannot be me. Do you understand what I'm saying now? You are peculiar. You are different. Are you getting me? There's a reason why you are here. And until you discover and awaken the guy inside of you, you will live a mediocre and unfulfilled life. May it not be your portion in the name of Jesus. There are four main questions that whoever wants to matter in life must ask himself. And of course, we form the basis of our study today. There are four questions. Number one, listen very carefully. Who am I? Who am I? He's talking about the question of identity question. Identity. Number two, where am I from? Where am I from? That is your origin. It matters. Number three, why am I here? That is the purpose of your existence. Number four, where am I going? That is, where is my destination? You see, all these four questions matters to everyone, whether you are young or you are adult. Listen very carefully. If anybody that wants to matter in life should be able to answer those questions. Number one now, who am I? In John chapter 1, verse 19 to 25. You see, and John chapter 8, verse 25 to verse 29. I have read John chapter 1 for you before. I want to read John chapter 8 now. John chapter 8. Open your Bible. John chapter 8. I want to read from verse 25. I read. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say, and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not the I mean that he spake of them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, that shall ye then shall ye they do know nothing of myself. Okay, I read when ye shall lift her up. Uh, the son of man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak, and these things, and uh, these things. And he said that, and he said that, and he that sent me is great is uh, with me, and the father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that uh, are pleased him. You see, the question of identity is a common question in Israel. You see, who am I? There is a purpose for God to have created you. Who am I? Ask yourself, who am I? Somebody is looking at me. Don't look at me. Who am I? Ask that question. Ask yourself, who am I? Because if you don't discover yourself, you'll be living a mimicking life. You try to be like your friend. And that's not the purpose of God for your life. You see, who am I? We have, we all have foundation and genealogy. Nobody is drawn from the sky. There are some things you are not in control. You have no say over the choice of your parents. You see, let's look up here. There are some things you are not in control of it at all. I'm talking of the destiny now, destiny now and you yourself. I say, who am I? You can, some of us cannot answer that question. You can only say, I am James. Because you don't know how they gave you that name, isn't it? I am James. I am John. But that is not the answer. The real self inside of you, who am I? Am I like my father? Who am I? I want to ask yourself again, who am I? Say it loud. Who am I? Who am I? You see, we all have foundation, really. And genealogy, nobody draws from the sky. There are some things you are not in control at all. You have no say over the choice of your parent. You just, just find that uh, somebody born you, isn't it? You have no choice. I used to tell people that uh, if God has told me where, we were, I want to be born, honestly, I would have told God, please, God, send me to America. 
God, I want to be born of a white man. How many of you think things thing like that? Raise up your hand if you are like me. Praise the Lord. Because you want a better thing. But God did not give us the choice of our parents. You cannot determine the city where you are born. Some of us are born in the village. You have no choice over the place where you are born. You have no choice over the country of your origin. Of course, you have no choice over your complexion. Over your complexion. And any attempt to change your complexion, you are trying to violate the law of God. If you are born black, you cannot be changed to white. And that is why you have to be very, very careful. You have no say over your choice of sex. You see, you are born a male or female. That is God, God determine all those ones. You cannot determine your language. You cannot determine your tribe. You just came to this world and you find yourself to be an Igbo. You find yourself to be an Aousa man. You find yourself to be an Ijo man. No matter the tribe you come from, you, you, can, you, have, you have no say on, on, on those forces. You should not try to attempt to fashion yourself different from what God did not create in you. E.g. bleaching or homosexual or lesbian, all those ones, you are not created with it. Any attempt to change that form, you are trying to wage war against God. You have no say over things God has created. You have no say at all. You just find yourself who you are now. Your foundation usually has impact to make upon you. Your foundation, that is the family where you come from, where you grew up, the type of training you are supposed to in life will definitely has impact in who you are. It will determine. But don't forget, there is something embedded already inside your field that will grow. Where you grew up and the training you went through also and the life you expose yourself to will determine. Parental influence also. Environmental influence. Location will determine your response to choices you eventually make in life. That is, as you are here now, if you are born by a Christian parent, there is tendency for you to have a Christian idea inside of you, to have the mind of God inside of you. I remember when I was young, I used to tell people, when we were young, anytime we are going out in those days with some of my friends, we are going out, where, 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 where? Anytime I see them making crusade, they are doing crusade. I alone will leave my friend. I will go and join them. I'll be watching them. My friend will call him and say, come, what is wrong with your brain? Something is wrong with you. I said, nothing is wrong with me. They are talking about Jesus here. They say, come, Joe. They'll be talking about the current, current, current. Leave them, Joe. Then I will leave them. But something is inside me that is drawing me towards anywhere they are preaching. I cannot control it. But this, my pressure of the peer group, they are enforcing all these ones on me. And all along, I begin to grow on like that. But something inside of me tend to draw to those areas. You see, you cannot blame me. Neither can you blame those friends. Because of the family background where they came from. Do you understand? If you follow me, shout hallelujah. A powerful hallelujah. Parental influence, environmental, and location will determine your response to choices you eventually make in life. You see, at one point or the other in life, we are confronted with choices. Choices. Do you know that uh, those of you that are here today, it's a matter of choice. You may not likely come here, isn't it? But you determine to come here. It's a choice. You see, the choice to serve the Lord is a choice. The choice to wear the type of dress you wore now is a choice. God has given us power to make choices. That is why we are not created a robot. We have power to think. We are unlike animal. We have power to choose, to choose what we want to do. To choose uh, the friend that we may have. We make our choices. And our choices make us. I will talk more on that when, it get, when we get to seminar area. You see, we make our choices. And our choices make us. Let me warn you. You will eventually live by the consequence of any choice you make in life. Beloved, look at me here. Life is a choice. Life is a choice. You are here today. I know many of us are here today. 
voluntarily. Many are here today because your parents drag you to come here, isn't it? Many are here today because their friend drag them to come here. Otherwise, you will have gone to town and begin to do carnival or go and waste yourself away somewhere else. It's a matter of choice. But may I tell you, that liberty that God has given to you, God is watching. God is watching what you are making towards it. And every choice that you are making is tailoring towards your destiny. If you are following me, shout hallelujah. A powerful hallelujah. I have told you, because, beloved, you are not born to be an allot. You are not born to be a drug addict. You are not born to be a drunkard. Any attempt to recreate what God did not do in you is an invitation to chaos. Are you getting me? Invite to problem. Anytime you want to go outside what God has done in your life, what you are looking for is chaos. Part number two now. Number two. Where am I from? Where am I from? When I was young, like uh, small, small children, small, small children in those days, when we are playing, something will just come to us. We'll be asking, my father, I am the son of my father. My father is the, my father has a great father. Who is the father of my great father? Then after thinking, thinking, we say, baby, God is the father of everyone. Beloved, that is thinking of man. Ability to think. Ability to assess ourselves. is a gift from the Lord that everybody possesses. You had it. Where am I from? That is your origin. You see, your origin is very, very important. Because if you don't know your origin, there's tendency you, you try to do some things quite different from others. Your origin. If I ask you, where are you from? Many of you will only ask me, I am from Epaja. I am from Emushi. I am from Lagos. That is not the question I'm talking about. Your origin, your source. How do you come to existence? I told you because Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 5. Let's read it again. Jeremiah chapter 1. Or if you are saying you can read for me. Jeremiah 1 verse 4 and 5. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We like that voice. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I form thee in the belly, I know thee. Before you are formed in the belly, I know thee. Although, I like I said, all men are born by one parent or the other. The Bible made us to understand that we are all from God, created in his own image. Say to yourself, I am from God. I cannot hear you like that. If your friend by your side did not say anything, don't bother. I am from the Lord. I am from the Lord. You see, why, are you, why you, I say that one is this? Maybe you don't know. Not everybody is from God, though. Are you getting me? So if you know you are from God, say with all boldness, I am from the Lord. God is my creator. And I'm carrying the image of God upon me. Please praise the Lord. You see, God is not the father of everyone. He is the creator of everyone. But it's not, may I tell you the truth? The truth, the truth is that God is not the father of everyone. He only father those who obey and follow his precepts. We can see that in John chapter 8, verse 44 and 47. You write it down. He's not a father to everyone, even though he's the creator of everyone, but he's never the father of everyone. You see, knowing your true origin will make you to act as a giant to confront the power of darkness with boldness and fearlessness. If you know your origin, 
that you are from the Lord. No power can confront you and go score free. Nobody can cross your way and go score free. If you are not from the Lord, you are from the Lord. You are created from God. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places, far above property and power. If you know that very well in your heart, nobody can intimidate you. Nobody can terrorize you. No witches and wizards can confront you because you are seated in heavenly places. Knowing your true origin will make you act as a giant. All those who have repented and submitted their life to Jesus Christ, they have become children of God. In other words, those who are still living in sin, those who are still committing sin, God cannot talk to you. You cannot hear the voice of God. To discover your guy inside of you will be very, very difficult. In other words, you need to become a child of God. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible said, Therefore, if any man is in Christ's word, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. And the Bible also told you, in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, Whoever is committing sin is of the devil. Devil is their father. That's the difference. Whoever is committing sin is of the devil. No matter your age, whoever is committing sin, no matter your title, no matter the name they call you, the Bible says, Whosoever is committing sin is of the devil. First 9 says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the work of the devil. First 10 says, In this Children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Can you see now? God is the creator, but he happened, he was not the father of everyone. He's only father of those who are children of God. Point number three now. Why am I here? Beloved, I'm going to spend some time here. Why am I here? That is the purpose of your existence. The purpose of your existence. Why am I here? You see, I want to challenge the majority of us today. Please, you need to know who you are. One day I was going on evangelism. I was sharing tract to everyone. Anywhere I come my way, I was sharing tract. One man looked at me. He said, look, pastor, I am 47 years old. If by now I have not determined my destiny, I am the I am most useless person. You see, in life... If you don't plan your life, the purpose of your life, if you have not known it, at the certain age of your life, one has lived a wasted life. And that is why I want to beg of you, children, youth, try to know the purpose, why you are here. It's very important. By the time you know your purpose, it will help you to realize the goal God has set for you. It will make you to realize the giant inside of you and walk towards it. So please, I want to listen very carefully to this section. Point number three. I say, why am I here? The purpose of your existence. You can write down because of our time. Exodus chapter 9, Exodus chapter 9 verse 16. Proverbs 16 verse 4. And Romans chapter 9 verse 17. God never create anyone without a purpose. God never created anyone without a purpose. We are created to be a solution to certain problem. You are created to solve a problem. God has made you for a particular purpose. You are on edge for a definite assignment to be accomplished. Look up here. Look up here. There's no, there's no, no, no non-entity among us. You are created for a particular purpose. Maybe you don't know. Judas was created for a particular purpose. I was reading my Bible. Jesus said, The son of man goeth according to what has been written concerning him. But woe is that one. Woe is that one. They are going to betray the son of man. It had been better if he was not born. Praise the Lord. Can you hear that? He was born. It had been better. If he was not born, you see, every one of us we have assignment on edge. When I was reading the book of Romans, chapter 9, 
You are going to see the mystery of God's creation. We are created for a particular purpose. God gave you an assignment to come and fulfill on earth. And if you fail to realize that purpose, ah, there's danger. There's danger. You are on earth for a purpose. Moses, I told you, was created for a purpose. The same thing with Pharaoh, Elijah, John, even our Lord Jesus Christ. God does not spare you for nothing. Maybe you don't know. Since you are created, people of your age that are born at that time, many of them have died. If I'm true, raise up your hand. You have a friend that you grew up together, but today they are died. Raise up your hand. And people are there. Praise the Lord. God does not spare you for nothing. There's a reason why you are living. You see, you are on earth. You are on earth for a purpose. Your destiny is in the hand of God. That is it. You need to discover your own, your own time, your own destiny. You are not in charge of your destiny at all. God is in charge, but you must discover it. You are created to serve God. God created you to serve, to serve him. You are created to show forth the work of God by living a life above sin. You see, you are created, number one, to serve the Lord. Number two, you are created that you should show forth the purpose of God in your life. Because generally in the world today, the world believes that nobody can live a life above sin. The world believes everybody lies, everybody commits sin. But God has designed you and put you wherever you find yourself to stand out as a product, as a particular product that God that has met Christ that can live a sinless life. The world is watching your life. They want to see somebody who will be single out to live a holy life. God is aware that this world is a corrupt world. God is looking for somebody who will stand out and live a holy life. God knows that there's wickedness in the world. God is looking for somebody who will be able to manifest what Christ died for on the cross of Calvary. Many of us are celebrating, celebrating Jesus, celebrating the birth of Christ without, celebrating Christmas without Christ. Are you getting me? Do you have that Christ in your life? You are saved, you are, you are living for the purpose of God. You are created to show forth the work of God by living a life above sin, holy life, pure life, in this world of impurity, in this world of unrighteousness, in this world of wickedness. God wants you to stand out. God has invested his life inside of you. Number one, to serve him. Number two, to live a holy life in the, life in the midst of corrupt world. That is one of the reasons why you are living. You are to show forth his glory. You're supposed to see the glory of God in your life every way. You can see that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are to demonstrate to the people of the world of that of what Christ did on the cross by living a sin-free life made possible by him. Say, hallelujah. You see, Christ did everything for us to be able to live a sin-free life is the one that pay for it. You are so unique, brother. You are so special. Look at somebody very close to you and say, my brother, you are so unique. Look at his face. He said, my brother, you are so unique. You are so special. Tell him again. And look at him and say, you cannot be me. Tell him like that. You cannot be me because I am different. Because I am unique. You are to live for him. You are to live for God. You are saved. You are created to live for God. You can see that Romans chapter 14 verse 7 and 8. Your life is a scope, a coverage. You must discover that coverage. I am going somewhere, beloved. You see, even though I said there's something inside of you, we are going to that area now. Where are you going to know that particular thing inside of you? But even that thing inside of you has a scope, a limitation, the scope where it can go. Are you getting me? When God created you and put that thing inside your life, there's a scope to which you can cover. You cannot go outside that scope. 
You cannot look at somebody else and say, oh, I like this one. I want to be like him. You can never be like him. There's a scope to which God has put you. You have to discover in discovery. You must discover your own scope. Discovery is the mother of recovery. If you don't discover, you cannot recover. You see, look at the issue of David in the first Samuel chapter 30, verse 18 and 19. David, first of all, discovered the Amalekites. He discovered where they are before he now went and recovered. In other words, you must discover, number one, the giant inside of you. Number two, you must discover the scope of that giant. You cannot be everything. There's a particular thing God has put inside of you. You are not a non-entity. You are born to be somebody and not to be nobody. You, are not ex you cannot excel outside your destiny. You cannot excel outside your destiny. The Bible told us in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible said there's a timing for everything. There's a timing for everything. That giant inside of you, there's a timing for it to manifest. It is there. It is incubated. It's growing gradually at a time. A time is coming when God has put there, when it's going to come out. I used to tell people, I think my father and the Lord knows about it. When I was 13 years old, when I was 13 years old, God has shown me the revelation all about my life. I was young, but I saw the revelation. And I told my dad, my dad told me I should keep quiet. I was on for that for a long year. I think I shared this during the launching of my ministry when our father and the Lord was there. After 40 years of that revelation, the thing now came to pass into details. I went to so many places, but the thing inside of me has to come out. Tell yourself, the guy on the inside of me, you will come out. Say it again boldly. It must come out, beloved. Because anything you are doing right now, even you are coming here, is towards the manifestation and realization of that giant. You are not just coming here for, enough, for nothing. You are going towards it. The Bible told us there is timing for everything. The secret of distinction is doing what you are ordered to do and doing, uh, and doing it at the right time. There is a timing for everything God has ordained on earth. There is timing for every purpose in your life. The matter of timing is very, very important. Let me give you an example of Joseph. Joseph had vision, but there is a timing for that dream to fulfill. You see, he saw a vision at the age of 17, isn't it? He saw a vision, and he told his father, he told his uh, colleague, uh, they say you, that vision will not realize. It will not come to pass. And they did all the cool. And David, I mean, Joseph, went through a lot of things for 13 years. After 13 years, the God who can never fail brought that into light. When, David was, I mean, when Joseph was about 30 years, he became a prime minister in Egypt. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, God is always there to help us fulfilling that particular thing inside of us. Joseph had vision, but there are timing for that dream to come to fulfillment. Even though the wife of Potiphar is there to abort your dream, beloved, look up here. I told you, there's a God inside of you, but don't forget, there's devil somewhere. Who does not want that thing to come to fulfillment in your life? You know the story of Joseph very well. Even though he has a vision, he has a destiny, but the wife of Potiphar was there. The wife of Potiphar wanted to abort the destiny of Joseph. That is why he called him, come and lie with me. 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 This young Joseph ran away. And as he ran away, another trouble started. Isn't it? He ran away. If Joseph has succumbed, 
to the pressure of that woman, the destiny of Joseph will have died. In other words, we need to be very careful. When they are warning us, run away from sin. <laughs> Follow God. There's a reason for doing that. Because if you are not careful, enemy has different agents in the world today to abort our destiny. And maybe you don't know, devil will not use something you don't like. It is what you like so much. The devil will use to trap you. He used food for you so. You saw food. You say, ah, I, I will die if you don't give me this pottage. And you say, eh, you want that pottage? Give me your birthright. He said, what is my birthright? Have it. The Bible says, he sought for it later with tears. He couldn't get it. He has lost it. What about Judas? Oh, of course, Judas lost money. He was one of the disciples. He loved money. If devil used women for Judas, he will not catch up with Judas. But he used money. Only 30, 30 pieces of silver. He has to abort his destiny. Say to yourself, Satan, Satan, you will not abort my destiny. Say to yourself boldly, Amen. You see, it is better to endure it's still better to endure or wait patiently today for the enjoyment of tomorrow, knowing your purpose will enable you to pray aright and the type of friend that you are keeping. You cannot do what God wants you to do until you know what he wants you to know. Say amen. You see what he wants you to know. I told you at the age of 13, there the Lord revealed who I am to myself. You need to know who you are also. Your success depends on what you... You stay on track. When you stay on track, you see, when you remain on track, you remain unchanging. Don't compromise. Follow God very closely. Be faithful and be righteous. Problems are the reason for creativity. Creativity is a soft existing problem. Whatever you do, listen very carefully now. We are going there. Whatever you do and enjoy doing it and others enjoy it is likely the area of your giant inside of you. I will take that statement again. Whatever you do and enjoy doing it and others appreciate you doing it and others enjoy doing it and <clears throat> that's the area of your life. Your own could be singing. Sometimes when you sing like this, people get converted. Your own could be maybe an engineering Maybe uh, beating drum. Maybe preaching the gospel. Maybe, and so on and so forth. Anything you are doing and you are comfortable in doing it without any stress. Anything that you notice in your life that people appreciate you doing it. That may likely be the area of the purpose in your life. If you know, understand me, shout Hallelujah. Whatever you do and enjoy doing it and others enjoy it lively. This is the area that God is proper for your life. When you find it difficult to obey God, God will find it difficult to bless you. I want to warn you. Try and obey God. Find out sing good details about your life before you move forward. Let's look up here. Find out details about your life. Even after you discover that particular area of your life. You must discover the scope. You want to go, I want to be an engineer. God, what type of engineer do you want me to be? Is it aeronautical engineer? Is it mechanical? Is it civil? And so on and so forth. God wants you to be a doctor. What area of doctor? Is it gynecology? Is it autosurgeon? And so on and so forth. God, you want me to be a singer. What type of song do you want me to be singing? Ask God. God will give you the scope. Because there is a scope. Of your own. If you go outside your scope, God will not bless you. You must know the scope and the timing and the location. Location, very important. Location, very important. After you have gotten all those ones, I've told you of timing. There's a timing for every to come for fulfillment. You are not in control of the timing. God knows the timing. Are you getting me? If you start too early, you won't be able to achieve anything. 
If you are, if you are starting too late, you may, and, and when folk got road, I remember my own problem. I didn't know God was, I didn't know, I know God was calling me in those days. But when I became a businessman, things were so rosy for me. I began to travel abroad. I began to do all those things. And I forgot that God was calling me. Until God himself destroyed everything that I had. Everything was destroyed. And I, somebody just introduced me to our father in the Lord at that time. And when he met me, he just looked at me and said, yeah, You know God is calling you. And let me tell you one thing. You cannot make anything in life until you go back to what God is saying. It was tough. I waited until God flogged me. May it not be your portion in the name of Jesus. The same thing happened to Jonah in the Bible. Jonah rebelled against God. And of course, he was trying to run to Tarsus. And you know what happened to Jonah on the way to Tarsus? Anybody that traveled with that Jonah, they lost their property. May you not travel with Jonah in the name of Jesus. Because he lost, he lost a lot of things. Until they bond with Mr. Jonah. And they throw inside the water. God say, wow. Jonah, you want to die? God prepared a fish to go and swallow Jonah. And Jonah was there for three days and three nights fasting. And by the time he prayed, God now sent a, a sheep, I mean a, a, a fish, to go and vomit Jonah. And when Jonah looked up, he saw when come to Nineveh. That was the signboard. The one you run to. You see, nobody can run away from God. I want to beg you, discover your, your destiny. When you discover it, ask for the scope. Ask for the timing and follow it. When you follow it, you are going to succeed. Never look at the world. Success of the world is nothing. There is something God has put inside of you that must grow. And that thing must grow out soon in the name of Jesus. Find out the details about your life before you involve in anything. Your profession matters. You're in your whether engineer or doctor and so on and so forth. You need details. Number four. Where am I going? That's the last point, beloved. Where am I going? Where is my destination, beloved? In the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 12 to 27, very long. And the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible told us clearly, it's been appointed that a man wants to die after that judgment. Beloved, we are in this world. Maybe you don't know. Yesterday has gone forever. It has gone forever. We don't see yesterday again. And maybe you don't know. If you spend 70 years on earth, you spend 25,550 days on earth. That's all. That's the maximum. Your 70 years is 25,550. Calculate it. You can break into hours. Out of those days, you sleep one quarter, one third of it. Isn't it? Now, I want to ask you, how old are you now? How old do you want to do? Do you think you are going to be? And you must realize the purpose of God in your life for this time. A time is coming, beloved, when our journey here on earth will come to an end. Everybody on earth, we have a limited time to spend on this earth. All stewards will be called to report back on the progress made on account of the talent given. Something inside of you. You are going to account to God one day. Detail of it. All still what will be called to report back. And therefore, where am I going? Where is going to be my destination after, after this world? Because both young look, look, children look at me here. Look at me. Look, look at that boy. Look at me here. We have a limited time to spend on this edge. A time is coming. When we are going to stand alone before the Lord, there's eternal life for every child of God. And there's eternal damnation, eternal condemnation for those who reject Christ, who wasted their talent, who live a useless life on earth. I want you to pattern your life in the way of the Lord. You are in the church by the grace of God. God is one that brought you here. And God is monitoring your life. What he has put inside of you is monitoring it that one day 
We are going to come and come and stand before him to give account of what you have done, even without your parents, without your teacher, without your pastor, without your mother, without your senior brother or senior sisters. You are going to stand alone and give account of all your secrets before that God. The eternal condemnation for those who rejected Christ, who wasted their destiny, their talent, who live a useless life on earth. Therefore, don't join bad friends. Don't join bad gang. Pattern your life the way of the Lord. Your life on earth is a lifetime opportunity to make choice of where you want to spend your eternity after life on earth. Eternity is sure for all mankind. Let's look up here. Maybe you don't know. Whoever is born, whoever is born, whoever is born will live forever. So far you are alive now looking at me. You are going to live forever. Never think that eh, when death comes, that's the end. Death, that's not the end though. It's the beginning of a new life. I am telling you the truth now because you are young. You can hear me clearly. You are going to live forever because you are born. If you are born, we are not born. It's a different issue. And therefore, you must evaluate your life. Evaluate the way you live your life. You are going to live forever. Death is not the end. It's just a change that must take place for everyone to go and stand and give account of their still world be still worship before the Lord. There's eternal condemnation, beloved. The life on earth is a life opportunity for every man to make a choice. Hell is real. Heaven is real. They are not story. They are real. Wherever you eventually make your abode after life, you will remain there eternally. Maybe you don't know. 20 years, 40 years, 100 years, you are just beginning. We are going to be there forever. And beloved, the life that you are living now is an opportunity for you to make a choice. Make a choice. I, 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 I remember your bad problem. And you, you, you will say, Oh, my mom, Pami. Oh, my mom, Pami. Oh, my mom, Pami. But why do you, Oh, my mom, Sekini. At that point, that is the point of a, a useless, a useless child. This child, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Let us say, Kai, don't kill yourself. The reason is, a day is coming when you will stand alone before the Almighty God. The God that you, I'm talking to you now, you cannot see. is by your side. He's the creator of everyone. He has record, no matter your age. He has record of your life. Whenever you eventually made your abode, you will remain there eternally. I must warn you, beloved, eternity is a life outside the grave a timeless period a life without an end that eternity hell has no hell has an entrance gate but it has no exit gate <laughs> i remember my friend in those days they, they say something they say ah me i will commit sin when i commit sin where where god will now throw me and overthrow me when he overthrow me I will be laughing and say, God, see now, you have told me. See me coming behind you. It's not like that. You walk with your two legs and enter the place. And hell, I'm telling you, beloved, it has entrance gate. It has no exit gate. Nobody goes there and come out. Once, once there, you are there forever. May it not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to beg of you, beloved, examine yourself critically before, after discovering the guard inside of you. Everyone I told you is very real. A place for the for the, for for a journey for those who serve the law. You must endure all things now to be able to make heaven your age before you die. It's an opportunity to you to choose and pattern your eternity, your life for eternity. Many are now wasting away now because they have missed their chance God gave to them. They are now wasting away because they missed the chance. Don't miss your own chance. This is a better point you are having. I want to tell you about a particular somebody now. Many have been wounded and become casualty. Many are dead before their time and spend a wasted destiny because they never discovered their purpose on time. I want to tell you of John. 
John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a man of God. The Bible told us in the book of Malachi chapter 5 verse 4. The Bible says, I will send a prophet who will come in my name. Isn't it? And when John came, I read to you in the book of John. They came to him. They said, are you the prophet? Are you Elijah? Are you this one? Do you know what John said? John said, I am the voice that cry in the wilderness. Is it not true? John knew that it was the voice that a cry in the wilderness. But John never discovered the total scope of his destiny. Jesus said something. Let us see in the book of Matthew. I want to, I want to show it to you. The book of Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 7 to 15. Matthew 11, verse 7 uh, to 15. Seven to fifteen. I want to read Matthew eleven verse seven uh, to fifteen. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, "What went you to see in the wilderness? To see a reed shaking with the wind. But what went ye out for to for to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's house. But what went ye to see? A prophet." Yea, I say unto you, more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have been, there have been risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the day of John the Baptist, the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violent and violent uh, take it by force. Verse 13. For all the prophets are and the law prophesy unto John. And if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was to come. Let's look up here. You see, John never knew that he has the spirit of Elijah. Elijah in his days is a no-nonsense prophet. I remember when King Ahaziah sent 50 battalion. Go and arrest Elijah. Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire fall. Isn't it? And fire con con consumed a battalion of 51 soldiers. The second battalion went there. A man of God, they said we should arrest you. He said, if I be a man of God, let fire come and devour you. The third battalion came. They said, my father, please, I cannot arrest you. I beg you. Can you follow us? He said, please, I will follow you. The same John, who had the spirit of Elijah, was put inside the prison. And he sent only one soldier to go and cut off his head. He never fulfilled his ministry. John was not sent to come and die for any man. He was come as a forerunner. Because he never realized the total potential inside of him. If he have known that he has a piece of Elijah, he will not die the way he died. Rest up now and go to pray. Close your eyes. You are going to pray for yourself. Because if you don't realize the totality inside of you, you will be behaving in a mediocre life. Something inside of you is supposed to rise up. To rise up. Get up under your feet. You are going to pray. Close your eyes. We boil the anger in your spirit. You are going to pray everything within me. Say like that. Everything around me that have caged my destiny. Release me now in the name of Jesus. Pray like that. Open your mouth and pray with boiling anger in your spirit. You must realize the guy inside of you. It must come out. Everything that are caging me. Everything that are caging my destiny. Open your mouth and pray for yourself. Pray with boiling anger in your spirit. Amen. 
In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Look up here. You are not praying, no. And if you are not praying, I will just lick the microphone and go. You are not praying. I want you to pray. I want to see the spirit of that youth inside of you. You are stronger. You are powerful. Isn't, isn't it? Shake yourself like this. Shake, shake yourself. Shake yourself. Aha. Aha. Shake yourself. Oh, yeah. Hold somebody very close to you. Hold the hand of that person very close to you. The two hands. And you look at that man. You look at that young boy. And you are going to say to the person like this, You, my brother. You, my brother. Any power that has caged your destiny. Release it now in Jesus' name. Pray. Aha. Pray for your friend. Pray, 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 pray. Release it now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release it now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. You, my destiny. Leave your friend now. You are praying for yourself now. Pray with boiling anger in your spirit. You, my destiny. Come out. Come out. From witchcraft cage. In the name of Jesus. Pray like that. Aha. He must come out. He must come out. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Close your eyes and raise your two hands up and pray like this. My father, my father, my father. I want to know who I am. Reveal myself to myself. In the name of Jesus, pray like that. Aha. Shout it very well. Reveal myself to myself. I want to know who I am. I want to know who I am. I want to know who I am. Open your mouth and pray like that. My father, my father, my father. Reveal who am I am. Aha. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. We have two prayer points. You are going to pray like this. Any power that has vowed to useless my life, you will not prosper. In the name of Jesus, pray like that. Oh, yes. Anybody that want to useless my life, you will not prosper in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Release me now. 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 Hey, Jesus. Powerful name we pray. Sing this one to me if I know with me if I know how to sing that song. Mole moba moti ba pada. Mole moba moti ba pada. Mole moba motun ba pada. Ire go go tota ba lo wo. Mole moba. Loru ko Jesu mole mo ba mo ti ba pada o mole mo ba mo ti ba pada o ire go go to ta ba lo Amen. You pray this final one like this, as the Lord liveth. You will pray like a guy at now. Stand straight like a soldier. As the Lord live it. As the word of God live it. I recover my glory. In the name of Jesus. Say it. 
Say it in the name of Jesus. I recover. I recover. I recover. I recover. I recover. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, I recover my glory in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, say, 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 say it. In the name of Jesus. Begin to say it. Close your eyes and say it. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Aha. Begin to tell God. I recover. I recover. I recover. I recover. I recover. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Aha. Say, 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 say it. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Lay your two hands upon your chest and let your amen be dynamic. Father, in the name of Jesus. If I were you, I would allow, I would allow my amen to be powerful than that of my friend. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Beloved, if there's anything you must achieve in life, it's what God has created inside of you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children, O oh God. No matter the shadow covering that particular giant, no matter the ancestral cage covering it up, by the authority in your name, release now to them in the name of Jesus. Release them now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Any power that says you are going to come to this world in vain. Every decree of darkness. Every agent of your father's house. Of your mother's house. That says you are not going to prosper. There's a limitation that are in your life. By the name of Jesus, be released now in the name of Jesus. Be released now in the name of Jesus. Be released now in the name of Jesus. From today, you refuse to live a mediocre life in the name of Jesus. You shall possess the gate of your enemy in the name of Jesus. Your life shall be better than that of your parents in the name of Jesus. The Lord will single you out among the children of your parents. In the name of Jesus. He shall be well with you. He shall be well with you. He shall be well with you. In the name of Jesus. Begin to thank God now. Begin to thank God. In the name of the Lord.